Well, hello there. It's me, Uncle Randy. And today we're doing an unboxing. Now, it's all the rage at the moment on the, on the internet, the unboxing videos. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to open what I know is a new buck knife. My, my nephew, Christine, I mean, Peter, has, has ordered for me. He said, you, you're going to love this buck knife, Uncle Randy. It, it might be a new spin on your old favorite. So, so what I'm hoping is, a, is perhaps a, 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 one, a 119 with an ebony handle and a, and, or, or perhaps a, a, a 110 with a, with, a, with a beechwood handle or something, something slightly exotic like that. Anyway, get out old faithful. And let's give it a bit of a once over with uh, with the unboxing therapy, shall we? Radio. First of all, I can already tell it's a buck. It's got that sense of uh, sense of importance and propriety to it. You hold it in front of you and you give it a good old sniff and you can smell that American culture just seeping out of the box. And... Uh, As you open the box, you can only smell it wafting out further and further. So this 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 knife's ordered from uh, from Blade HQ, fine people down in Salt Lake City. A little too little too liberal down there for for how I like it, but uh, you know those those Mormons know how to party a little too hard sometimes. I reckon. Anyway, we're uh, we're gonna push on with this. Hopefully, there's no confetti or or. Uh, Sexy sexual surprises in here, but uh, uh, how's these new boxes work? Cut the tape there. Give this one a go. pull. It, yep, he's got it, she's got it. Well, this is a little, little unorthodox. Got a little, little uh, picture of a, of a bird with, well, something of a erect. Penis there, so I'm already a little bit let down. It's just reeks of reeks of Utah, typical Utah behavior. Putting in a putting in an obscene drawing like that there. It's uh, it's uh, got me all out of sorts. Um, filling with this uh, this is the environmentally friendly packing peanuts, which uh, again perhaps a little bit uh, a little bit on the fruity side once once again. Clearing out a lot of this extra space in here. We got a black box in there. Oh well, this looks like a premium buck product, and I must admit I'm excited. Now, just confirming. Yep, you got the American flag on there. This is a, a made in the USA buck. They have have had some dalliances with the uh, with the foreign foreign nations. I mean, even the even the sheath on this here uh, buck 119 special. These days are made in Mexico, so. Well, I guess that's what those slots in the border wall are for, aren't they? Passing, passing through uh, sheath-sized articles. At any rate, uh, that's the way of the world, and there ain't much we can do about it. So uh, let's just push on once again with this unboxing. So uh, getting out this uh, buck knives, edge of a legend, a nice little uh, magnetic closure on the box there. And uh, I'm hoping to open it up. It's a... Uh, Definitely too small to be a buck one nineteen, so I'm going to assume it's a it's a buck buck one ten. Uh, I mean, they might have been feeling a little bit jazzy and gone and done something crazy like order me a buck one twelve, but I take that as a personal front to the size of my hands. At any rate, well, it continues to to get fancier and fancier as we push on. Um, you got this substance in here, which. Uh, Appears to be just some kind of cardboard. Could also double as a fire starter or a, or a horseshoe cleaner if you bunch it up and give it a rub. And we're gonna open what I'm now beginning to have a dawning dread that is not a buck 110 at all. And in fact, it looks like Buck have gone ahead and made a mistake and, and ordered some kind of triple tolerance or well, zero friendliness knife and and gone ahead and put their uh, put their proud buck anvil insignia on it so uh it's a uh, it's one of those i'm trying to find the nail nick it's uh, one of those nail nickless knives there it, it does appear to be a folder um 
Well, I don't like this at all. This is this is most unimpressive. It's got a, a clip there you can put in your pocket. I'm just double checking the double checking the box here. And it doesn't seem to be any kind of leather sheath. No, nope, no, there's it appears to be enough that you, you carry shamefully inside your pockets rather than a, a proudly on the outside. Well, let's uh, let's uh, get to get to opening this guy with lack of nail nick. I suppose I'll I'll pull the blade open. See, it's walk and talk. There is no walk and talk at all. And in fact, um, I'm now realizing that the the back lock isn't there. So they've moved the back lock to the side, and they've reversed the action. So you pull it away rather than rather than uh, pushing it in. So you 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 got a bit of a click there, and you, you pull this one across, and then you have to lever the knife closed again. It's, well, to someone who's seasoned with the Buck 110, it's most inconvenient. Uh, now, what do we got here? You got to, uh, well, 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 I mean, that, that's that's rather snappy, but, you know, snap isn't always what I'm after. It's, sometimes these things can be a little bit too jazzy. Now, we're looking here. We got an edge made of what I'm assuming is the, the classic Buck 420HC in the Well, well, well. I see someone's finally bowed to peer pressure. Yeah. Put a steel on the knife, which has an S in front of it and a four five and then a VN. So I'm not sure how many uh how many HCs are in this one because it doesn't say. You you could always be confident that the 420 HC had 420 of them. So this may not have any HCs in it at all. Uh, it is it is still heat treated by Mr. Paul Bose or Boss or Boss Boss. On one side you got some uh, some kind of plastic cloth material, and on the other side you got a, a rather hefty piece of stainless steel. Looking at the edge there, well, it's still a buck knife. It's it's still got that what I like to call that character where. Where you get your knife and it's got a little bit of character to it. It's it's a unique piece just for you. You know, it's it didn't doesn't feel like it was made by by some kind of precision machine. It was made by made by people, hard working people. So it does have that sense to it, and it does still sort of feel like a buck. It's a you know the certain things like they they get the grinder going and they say you know what our our users are individuals, so we're going to make all of our knife grinds individual as well. So you know, on one side you got this uh, this grind here that's uh, maybe got a slight little wobble in it. You know, a little bit indicative of of uh, you know how life can be sometimes. You get a few wobbles along the road, and and you, you open up your knife and you you get her done. So you got some of that going on, on that side, and on the other side, yeah, you got a little bit of a little bit of a dip in there. Yeah, it just dips in the road as we all go through. So you know, without without getting too uh, without getting too flowery on you, I'd say some. I see some facets of life in this uh, this Buck Buck 110, this highly specialized version of the Buck 110. But uh, we'll see if they've gone and given it another coat. Actually, let's let's see on on the box there. This one here is a it's a double zero forty BKSB. Again, that's getting a little bit too uh, too complicated there. I mean, B, what does BKSB mean? You know, it's, it's just a bit too much. You're starting to remind me of all those uh, eight eighty CR McGee MV steels from from China. There, you know, you just call call your name. You got you got three letters, three numbers. That's all you need. You one two zero, one twenty, one ten, one one nine. That's all you need. Alrighty, so we're gonna, we're gonna push on this, push on this flipping button there. And uh, give that a bit of a warm fur. And it springs open with a fair amount of gusto, but uh, look, I, I, I'm gonna tell you, it's, there's already companies that make knives like this, and they're all called uh, called uh, the zero the, the zero toler zero tolerances, and uh, and the What's the other one there? The the Kai Kai Kaiser Kaiser and the Wee Wee knives and the I think even Gerber have started in the last uh, in recent history making knives a little bit like this. And I suppose Buck's just doing what they're doing. It's capitalism, isn't it? You gotta you gotta stay competitive or you get shut down. Uh, well, a little bit uh, hang a little bit uh, bit right of the center, which is you know as I am too. So again, sort of. 
identifying with this knife more and more as I as I handle it. Fire it open and wrap my mitt around there, and you got some nice, some nice sort of hand filling uh, plastic fabric there. Can't remember. It's probably got some other code for it too. It ain't nice like the phenolic, that's for sure. You know, nothing beats a, a nice black shiny phenolic handle. But uh, you know, it's got a certain roughness to it, which I suppose all the kids like when they're doing their uh, doing their tacticals with it. You see, I'm not even a tactical man. I don't need a knife and I need to overcome an adversary. I, I use old old Jack Jack Benson and Phil Harris here. It's, it's all I've ever needed. And um, so yeah, I, I know it's popular with all the younger fellers with sort of firing away out with your fancy high high speed whiz bang knives with your grippy handles and your your flipper actions and all that sort of whatnot, but it certainly ain't for me. Anyway. anyway, well, I guess we're gonna have to put this thing through its paces. Knowing it's a buck, I'm assuming it's gonna have some well-treated American steel, whatever this uh, S45 is, but uh, I guess time will tell, won't it? Time will tell. How we feel about this guy. Time will tell. Alrighty, I got some little uh, design pointers there for him. Uh, so looking at this knife here, I mean, it does a few things right. I, I do like a blade that's sort of a, I don't know, ate that belly. I, I'd keep that belly. I'd, you know, just nice and straight, progressing in, enough there for, for cutting your meat or, or peeling an apple. Yeah. Rocking it on a chopping board, uh, rather than dropping off, I'd prefer to for to clip the clip the point off just a little bit and then just nice straight back of the blade there. Now all this business here, I mean, uh, I understand these modern materials are apparently very strong, but I like the surety of a nice bolster surrounding my pivot. I get a nice little bolster there. Sure there, and yeah, there we go. You know, make it a something something regal looking, like a nickel silver or brass or something, some such. And then moving back here, I mean, I'm looking at this these these little you know sideways locks here, frame frame locking business. Look at all this extra nonsense you need to have. You know, have that there. Oh, it's going to interfere with the the pocket clip, and I'll get the pocket clip later. So I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna go go ahead and remove the remove the fancy uh, fancy frame lock there. I'm gonna just revert to a, a lock back, and I think it's called a lock back for a reason. I think it should always be at the back. So you know, pop the lock back there at the at the lock back if you catch what I'm drifting, and uh, you know, channel the handle there. And still swelling, filling the hand. This one's on the right track there. So you know, pull that one away. And you know what? Make that look nice. A bolster on this end as well. Now, of course, you want to know it's a buck. So you don't want to tarnish up any of these bolsters. And I'm not the hugest fan of a billboard on the blade. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little, maybe a little shield or insignia in the middle there. And there you go. Zero, zero, 0040. I feel like this would be a, a fine compromise uh, whilst, you know, keeping the new and fresh things about it. All I'm saying is turn the blade back into a clip point, add bolsters on either end, probably some kind of wood handle, let's be honest here. Put a shield in the middle and a lock back at the back. Oh, and get rid of these pocket clips. If you're carrying a knife, you'd be proud to carry a knife. You go and take those clips off and you make yourself like a, a pouch or a sheath for it. I draw something and just knock something up there. You know, a little look top flaps open there and, and down it goes you know perfect for your 0040 the new new and improved improved 0040 so there we have it the new and improved uh, buck 0040 you keep making it in america and i tell you what you can even keep your s57 st steel or whatever you're calling it uh, just a few little balance changes and such, just to make it a bit more of a palatable knife for everyone there. It's something I think they, they do well to make a make a make a little effort into into rethinking. Anyway, all this uh, flash and bang in your knives—it's just 
it lacks that common sense of, of what I used to love most about buck knives. And common sense is something that's just evaporating from the world these days. It's, it's something that, you know, I tell you what, if they told everyone they had to write in cursive and drive stick shift again, all those millennials wouldn't know what hit them, you know? Anyway, I'm off to go and uh, pay the tax department in iTunes gift cards, because apparently there's a warrant out for my arrest. Y'all take care, and I'll see you in the next video.